Welcome to the MAM Journals. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Suzuki GSX-8S, a brand new bike from Suzuki. I first saw this bike at the Birmingham Motorcycle Show at the end of last year and I've been looking forward to riding it ever since. Thanks to the generosity of King's Two Wheels Centre in Oxford, I've now had the opportunity to do so. I think this sector is getting really hot. The Yamaha MT-07 has really dominated it for the, the previous years and it's nice to see a bit of competition come into the market space with both this bike and indeed the Honda Hornet. I've never ridden the MT-07 and although I have ridden a derivative of it, the R7, I've done a few track days on that so I know the strengths and capabilities of the engine and I'm looking forward to comparing that in my mind to this new Suzuki engine. To give you a, a feel um, for the bike and, and what it does, I think the best way for, for me to do it is I'm going to do a technical walk around and we're going to talk about the new engine, we're going to talk about the chassis and the dimensions of the bike, we're going to um, have a look at the technology that they fitted to it and then finally I'm going to go through and talk about some of the aesthetics and some of the general finishes on the bike. I'm then going to take you um, on a GoPro ride with it and you can see how I was finding it and what my thoughts were in terms of its handling and its power and capability. Finally, I'm going to come back here and give you my concluding thoughts as to what I've made of this brand new Suzuki. I do hope that you enjoy the video. I always think the best place to start on a technical walk round is the engine and I think we should spend a bit of time on this because this is for Suzuki a brand new engine. It's a 776cc liquid cooled parallel twin it's got two overhead cams and eight valves now most of us have ridden twins when we were younger and one of the challenges they have is they can vibrate indeed some of the very early twins were famous for for dropping parts along the road as they went as they vibrated off and these vibrations come in two forms they come in what's called primary and secondary now to help adjust and improve on that they've gone through various crank designs i.e pulses of the engine and they've had most of us have probably ridden a, a 360 degree twin where both the both pistons are coming up and going down together we've probably actually ridden without knowing it a 180 where it's ones at the top and ones at the bottom and this crank configuration is 270 degrees i'm not even going to attempt to do an arm movement to replicate that movement but it gives the pulses very similar to v twins which is a sort of sensation which most of us like riding when we're riding a twin. It's actually a popular solution to an old problem in so much as both Yamaha, Honda and indeed now Suzuki have adopted this setup. Now you might think, well why don't we just put a bigger V-twin in? Um, the V-Strom 650 was a perfectly good engine. The reason why it hasn't been done was because it, it was hard to get much more power out of their unit and they really had to start again to go to this parallel twin. V-twins, um, one of the inherent challenges with them are of course with the cylinder at the back, uh, they do run at a different temperatures to the one at the front and trying to balance those out through various cooling methodologies is quite technical as, um, as any Ducati race team will tell you and heat is the enemy of power. So I think this is quite an, en uh, an interesting engineering solution and if, any, if, if as I say you have ridden uh, a twin and said so, well I didn't like them you should definitely try one of these new style former engines because they have made big steps forward. Uh, this configuration in itself does not completely eliminate vibrations and therefore they put balancer shafts on, as indeed they do on, on all twins, or the majority of twins that I can think of, um, and this particular one has two balancing shafts, one for each cylinder, to help smooth out those primary and secondary vibrations. Um, it's a first for Suzuki. I don't actually think it, um, the twin balancing shaft is new. I think the Yamaha TDM850 had twin balancing shafts as well, but correct me if I'm wrong. Now, going through the technicalities of it, what does it actually produce? Well, this engine produces 82 brake horsepower at 8,500 revs. Uh, but more impressive for me, it produces... 78 newton meters of torque at six and a half thousand revs 
Now, that's an impressive number. And there's, a, there's an old joke about um, brake horsepower is how fast you hit the wall and torque is how far you move it. Now, in the real world, if you're going down the hangar straight at Stilverson Circuit, there's no substitute for brake horsepower. But if you're on the A361 to Banbury, torque is your friend. And we'll touch more on that when I actually talk about what the bike was like to ride. So let's talk about the chassis. Um, I think one of the advantages for me is that at five foot eight is that this bike is actually quite small in terms of its dimensions. Uh, you don't, you certainly don't need a step ladder to get on it, which is a refreshing change from some of the bikes in the market today. But obviously, that depends on how tall you are. And some people will like the fact that this is quite a petite bike, and some won't. If I turn that into numbers, um, the seat height is eight hundred and ten. Uh, millimeters which is you know in my mind perfect for a rider of my size it's got medium geometry it's not a sports bike in terms of its handling and performance nor is it a tourer um, I know some some of you probably get a little bit glazed over when I start talking about dimensions but I, I feel the need to actually sort of explain those comments with numbers it's got a 25 degree rake it's got a 1465 millimeter wheelbase either the distance between the um, the touch points on the tires um, it's got upside down forks and I actually particularly it's unusual to see them in in that metallic sort of silver look uh, most of them are anodized um, shades of gold or black nowadays so I, I personally like that um, it's got no suspension adjustment on the front you, it, it is what it is and on the rear you have a link type coil spring oil damped in there there's no adjustment on that other than preload so um, We'll see how they got on with getting that right when I talk about the riding. It's, it's fitted with 17 inch wheels, front and rear, and it's got uh, 185 55 tyres on the back and 120 70s on the front. So, nice what I would call medium geometry setup. Brakes, it's got a single disc obviously at the back and it's got twin radials at the front right so let's talk about technology on the bikes and a good place to start is this uh, five inch tft screen which was very good it's um, easily readable in the brightest of sunlights uh, nice and colorful and i quite like the the sort of layout and the adjustment controls on on these suzuki's but in fairness it's about familiarity and, and regular uses i've got four suzuki's so um, i'm pretty tuned in to how they think and how they operate them so you can change on the mode you can see there i'm changing the traction control it's got four positions it's got off one two and three i tended to run it at two although i did try it in some of the lesser uh, modes as well and in terms of power you've got all of the power that it's got quite promptly in the A mode. You've then got a B mode, which is softer, and I guess the C mode, which you won't be surprised to hear I never actually bothered trying, which is probably for very wet conditions. Although I can, I always, I always think I can sort of ride around with this stuff, stuff, but I guess it depends on how you like your, your power to be delivered. So it's good that you've got those options one of the nice things about this bike so you can't really see it very well i'll probably do it better with it oh, it's not too bad when i get down there that you can see it it's got a quick shifter and suzuki quick shifters are good and i'll touch again on that when i'm riding and that is up and down they don't operate up until after 2000 revs and they um, coming down I think it's about 1700 revs when you can operate it but there's, there's a knack to, to getting the best out of the quick shift mechanisms uh, but it, it's a knack that's quickly acquired if once you have the confidence to have a go with it because I know that some people haven't ridden bikes with quick shifters um, whilst we're 
looking um, sort of at technology. I do like the, the fact that a lot of this stuff is very easy to access and to get at, which makes it an easy bike to sort of live with. Um, it makes you feel that the bike was designed by somebody who actually tried to clean one, which is always an asset. But um, I think it's, uh, it's got a nice level of technology. It's not at the very top uh, of the technology available nowadays, but it's got a nice balanced approach to how it uses it. And it's useful, as I'll describe, when we come to riding. So moving on to finish and aesthetics. Um, there's an old saying that one man's meat is another man's poison, as some Roman bloke once said. Lucretius, if, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, for me, it's a little bit Transformer-like, if that makes sense. But there are a few things I do actually really like. I love the look of the new engine. I think that's very purposeful looking. So I do enjoy that. I like the stubby exhaust. And as I touched on earlier, I do like the silver front forks. I think they uh, set it off nicely with that sort of black and silver look to it. Not too many mix and matches going on in there. Um, I personally don't think it's a pretty bike. I would describe it more as purposeful. But as I say, you may well look at that and think that is perfect. I do like this um, foot peg setup. Easy to clean, easy to get at and attractive. The ex a couple of things I wasn't entirely keen on. This was the, the exhausts when they come from Suzuki are... Um, they look a bit corroded, to be honest, um, but I, I spent, uh, for filming, I spent half an hour sort of getting at them and cleaning up, and they do clean up reasonably well. So I think if, if you don't like the look of when, they, when you originally see it in the showroom, I wouldn't be too alarmed. You will be able to get that gleaming if you're of that disposition. Um, I think it's only fair with just talk about sort of paint finishes and... Suzuki are always it's nice color paint and they do it but it can be a bit soft I'm sorry Suzuki but it's, it's just just the truth really and any black is a particularly soft pigment and that doesn't matter whether it's Suzuki or anybody else it's just the nature of how you you get the black pigment to actually create it can do a soft finish so it can scratch quite easily so I think if you're tempted by a black one and you because you like the looks of it you, you might be well advised to put a very hard coat of polish on just to protect it as soon as you get it. Um, so those that know me won't be surprised here. I've already done this one. I just couldn't stand the thought of scratching it. The bike is currently available in three colours. It's, it comes this, this is the black version. Obviously you, it comes in blue and it's got blue wheels. It looks very Suzuki. And then you get a, a, a white with a bit of blue on it and the blue wheels. In the UK, these bikes are all priced at seven nine nine nine, and that includes the quick shifter, which I think is a particularly strong selling point of this bike. Anyway, let's have a look at what it was like to ride. All of these new twins are fairly muted to fire up, although the 8S does, as I explained earlier in the technical review, have the nice pulse of a V-twin, despite its parallel twin configuration. It's all clever engineering. The bike feels responsive and the slow speed handling is precise and predictable. As you can see, it's easy to manoeuvre around these speed bumps and the bike goes exactly where you point it. Some bikes I ride are more vague and I did like the precision of the steering and handling on this bike. The firm suspension at this speed copes well with the numerous road repairs without a murmur. The predecessor to this bike is of course the highly regarded but now long in the tooth SV650. A good, solid, reliable V-twin. It has reached the end of its development. I rode one some years ago and was impressed with the engine but found that the suspension softer than I like. Great in the wet but to my mind not firm enough for a nice summer ride. I was pleased to see that the new 8S has significantly firmer suspension as standard. 
I will return to that later. The 5 inch TFT is clear and as I mentioned early really easy to read in the brightest of sunlight. The uncluttered look of the TFT and the handlebar switches add to the feeling that you're riding a small bike and from the this, the cockpit perspective, it would be easy to think that you're actually riding a 400cc bike until of course you open the throttle. Conscious that quite a few riders are yet to try a quick shifter, I thought it might be helpful to explain how they work. As we all know, to change gear conventionally, we pull the clutch and adjust throttle revs to match the gear ratios. A quick shifter performs both of these functions for you. Originally designed for high performance or race bikes, they used to be upward only, facilitating rapid changes on close ratio gearboxes. They have developed significantly over the years and are now good for both up and down transitions on the road with a simple tap of your toe on the gear changer. In my view, and I've tried quite a few systems, Suzuki's system is the best. You really only need to use the clutch as you pull away initially. You can, of course, if you wish, use traditional gear changing either randomly as you choose or entirely if you prefer. It's a good system and I will and I do use it extensively on both my 1000 GT and my Hayabusa. I found myself using both approaches in town and traffic which was easy on this nimble and precise bike assisted by the low seat height. With good torque this bike is one that you do not have to chase the revs on. On most occasions you won't need to change down to accelerate past traffic although if you prefer to do so there's certainly plenty of performance available. The bike makes easy and comfortable progress on these types of roads, accelerating with little effort in sixth gear. It is a naked bike and you can of course feel and hear wind noise and buffeting, but the bike itself remains stable and composed throughout. It glides effortlessly through roundabouts and the firm suspension feels predictable, although I am less convinced by the tyres. I did, on more engaging roads, find myself leaving the bike in lower gears looking for opportunities to enjoy the torque and acceleration of the engine rather than rush to what I would call the quieter zone of the sixth. The bike does have a sporty feel to it and here in the UK it would be easy to end up with a few penalty points on your licence if you weren't careful. Although on this occasion I have largely chosen to show you slower roads and dual carriageway, I did of course also ride on my preferred, more interesting roads on the way to my cafe stops. The torquey engine, quick shifter, engine braking and taut handling made it great fun. You can certainly make good progress but you do need to be careful on damaged, uneven or badly repaired surfaces as the firm suspension combined with the stiff Dunlops can get the bike out of shape. A video perhaps not best shown on YouTube. This is the road to Kidlington with airport on the left. It was apparently once in its flying school heyday one of the busiest airfields in Europe. King's two-wheel centre is nearby and I am as always grateful for the loan of this new model Suzuki 8S. So what have I made of the bike? Well the first question I asked myself once I finished riding it and I'm beginning to prepare to actually make a video is did I enjoy it and the answer is an unequivocal yes. It's a lot of fun on bendy A roads. It's got a nice power spread, easily accessible, it's got good brakes and nice firm handling for sensible roads and um, great engine braking so you can sort of do what I would describe as a point and squirt approach and it was very enjoyable. It was less enjoyable on some of the 
very small roads, bumpy roads that I went across. And part of that is obviously the firm suspension, but I suspect a major contribution to that is these Dunlop tyres. I'm not, we've all got personal views about tyres, but I don't particularly get on with these OE fitted Dunlops on this type of bike. I find them too firm and on occasions skittish. But I did enjoy riding the bike. I think it's a, a, a very flexible bike, very comfortable to ride. It's easier to ride in traffic. And for me, it's got a really good riding position. I talked earlier about it being quite petite. I am quite a small rider. And, in, and as you can see, I'm virtually flat footed um, in an upright position. It fits me well. So what about the... the uh, the, the competition well I would be very surprised if this bike wasn't actually specifically aimed at the MT-07 and seeing where they could take them on and I think they've done a good job in doing that the MT-07 is is a little bit old in its design and they'll probably need to go again of course the Honda put the cat amongst the pigeons so to speak uh, with the launch of the Hornet which is 90 brake horsepower so a bit more but to get that sort of power out of those these twin engines it's a different riding characteristic so it'd be um, it's more horsepower um, than the torque that this bike offers and then again that will be down to to personal choice in terms of what you could use it for well, could you use it as an everyday bike? Yes, you could. I think, you know, I think it'd be a nice bike for just leaping on, going 50 miles away to uh, catch some friends for a cup of coffee or something, and you'd have fun doing it. You might even surprise a few of them on the way uh, with the handling and performance of this bike. I think you could also ride it through town. You could commute on it. Could you tour on it? Well, they do do some racks and, and, and bags. Personally, I mean, I'm I've probably done three and a half thousand miles in touring this year and I, I'm beyond the days when I do it on a bike like this but when I was younger my wife and I we used to go off on our Kawasaki 650 and we managed perfectly and had a lot of fun so yes I do think it's it's capable of doing that so I think it's a nice versatile bike and it will for some tick a lot of boxes at the beginning of this review, I said that the sector is certainly heated up in this middleweight category. And I think this bike really proves just how hot it's got. I think there's some great bikes to choose from if you're in the market for a bike of this style and type. And this is one of them. I do hope that you've enjoyed the video and uh, you found it useful. If you did, you might be kind enough to press like, or if you've not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Um, but as always, I don't worry about whether you do or don't do any of that. What I do hope that you do is that you ride safe and that you stay well.